Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One king, run! Huskies. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike and the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog Yukon King as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Going, going, gone. That's the way Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice disappears at breakfast time. These ready-to-serve cereals hit the spot from first to last delicious spoonful. Yes, wheat or rice shot from guns is exploded up to eight times normal size to make it crisp and tender. Tomorrow morning, fill a bowl with Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. Top with fruit... Like, say, sliced bananas, add milk or cream and sugar. Talk about swell tasting. Say, just you watch it disappear, but fast. (laughs) Speed was a famous lead dog that belonged to Chick Carter, a trapper who lived north of Beaver City. King was only six months old when he met Speed for the first time. It was during one of Sergeant Preston's summer patrols, and King had been allowed to accompany him as a reward for the progress he was making in his education. To tell the truth, the person of greatest interest to King at the Carter cabin was three-year-old Johnny Carter, and the little boy in the party played in front of the cabin while Chick and the sergeant talked and Speed looked on. You've got a good dog there, Sergeant. Chick, I think I'm going to have a great one. As good as my speed? Well, that's asking a lot, but (laughs) we'll wait a few years and see. (laughs) Ah, look at speed. He has a great tolerance for you. Ah, just sitting back and watching and (laughs) making sure that neither Johnny nor King play too rough. Ah, If I didn't have speed around, I don't think I'd try to keep Johnny with me. Mary gone. I understand, but... uh... Johnny's a healthy young rascal. This is a wonderful place for a boy to grow up. It's the only life for me. I find it hard to breathe when I'm cooped up in a town or a city. Johnny likes the woods, too, already. He isn't afraid of anything. Uh, not afraid enough. That's why speed's so necessary, to keep an eye on him. Johnny thinks every animal's his friend and was especially designed to be his playmate. I swear he'd even try to pet a wolverine. Let's hope he doesn't get the chance. You haven't seen any around, have you? I've seen the tracks of one. Oh? Huh? That's bad. I hope he moves on before it's time to set out my lines, that's all. Wolverines can make a lot of trouble. You know what the Indians call them, devils. I never heard of one that weighed more than 50 pounds. But they pack more meanness in their hide than a man-eating tiger. Hey, it's time for Johnny's nap. Come here, Sprout. Nap time. The youngster toddled toward the cabin, and King romped at his side. But Speed took a hand in the proceedings. Playtime was over, and he explained this to King decisively. King was a respectful puppy. He recognized Speed's authority, and he stopped immediately. The sergeant, Chick, and Johnny disappeared in the cabin. Then Speed relented. Nothing could interfere with Johnny's routine. But he was a good host, and he invited his guests to take a run in the woods. Johnny was in the cabin while joyfully King followed the older dog's lead, and together they ranged through the forest around the cabin. It was about 15 minutes later that King decided to explore a deep, tangled ravine on his own. And at the bottom, he discovered a strange new creature with yellowish fur and black markings. The animal had an unpleasant smell, and he didn't seem to be in a good temper. But King was determined to be friendly and advanced on him with an invitation to play... The wolverine waited, every muscle in its evil little body tensed for action, its jaws as merciless as a steel trap ready to kill. King romped in and away. The wolverine waited. The puppy must come closer before he could strike. 
King was utterly unaware of his danger and decided to take a playful nip at the strange little fellow. He did. <laughs> and only by the fraction of an inch did the wolverine's jaws miss the puppy's jugular vein. The wolverine came after the puppy. King was too surprised to move. But then a gray-coated avenger swept down the side of the ravine. It was speed. He moved in like lightning, caught the wolverine to the base of the neck and tossed him high in the air. The wolverine landed 20 feet away, unhurt and snarling his defiance. Speed was after him once more. Once more the maneuver was repeated, and the wolverine sailed through the air. But this time, even through his rage, he realized that Speed's tactics were too much for him. And when he hit the ground, he ran. Speed was content with his partial victory, and he proceeded to lecture King on the utter foolhardiness of trying to establish friendly relations with the wolverine. King accepted his new knowledge and followed Speed quietly back through the forest to the cabin. Five years passed. Five years in which King became the swiftest and strongest lead dog in the Northwest. Five years in which Speed had grown very old. And it was during that fifth winter that misfortune came to Chick Carter. One day he walked into Ben Martin's trading post. Hello, Ben. Well, uh, no furs today? No. I heard you've been having trouble. Joe said a wolverine was raiding your line. That's right. Well, I guess you want some supplies. I need them, Ben, but I haven't got any money to pay for them. Oh, I'd like some credit. For how long? Until I get rid of this wolverine and bring in some pelts. Uh-huh. I'll get rid of him somehow. Well, that's a hard thing to do. But tell you what, Chick, I'd like to make you a proposition. I've got to have the food. Sure, anything you say. Yeah, you better wait until you hear it. Well? I notice you're not using speed anymore. Oh, he's too old to pull his way. Matter of fact, I need a new lead, but food comes first. How would you like to sell speed? Oh, not a chance. I broke him to harness, Chick. He's the best dog I ever trained. He's the best dog I ever drove. I'd like to own him again. I told you he can't work anymore. Oh, that doesn't matter. I'd like to own him just so that I could have him around and... Brag about the time that he won the 40-mile race and all the rest of it. He belongs to Johnny more than he does to me. Well, don't you want to listen to my proposition? Go on. Now, you bring him here, and I'll let you have all the food you need. I've got a young, well-broken lead dog that you can have. Speed stays here until spring. If you can pay me off by then, all right. You can have him back. And if you can't, he stays here with me. Now, what do you say? Uh, I'll have to think it over. He'll, uh... It'll be a sort of security for your debt. And you figure I won't be able to pay it off. I want to own speed again. That pesky wolverine is giving you your chance. Well, they're hard to catch. I'll have to think it over. Suit yourself. Yeah, it all depends. I'll see you tomorrow. Chick drove back to his cabin. And on the way, he made his decision. If the wolverine had left his traps alone that day, he would have enough money to keep going, and he would refuse to part with speed. If he had no pelts to sell, there was no choice. He set out to inspect his lines as soon as he reached home, and Johnny and Speed came with him. Come on, Speed, don't lie behind that way. We should have left him at the cabin. He'll keep up now. You and I are going to have a serious talk about Speed, Johnny. About what? Well, well, perhaps we can let it go for a while. It can wait until tonight, anyway. Okay. I sure hope that Wolverine hasn't been at the traps again. So do I. <laughs> or better still, I hope he steps... Too smart. Are their pelts worth anything? Yes, that's Wolverine fur around the edge of your hood. Any other fur and your breath would freeze on it. Why is that? Maybe because the frost can't stand a Wolverine any more than I can. Dad, how many pelts have you lost because of this one? Close to a hundred. That's bad, isn't it? It sure is. It's been a bad winter. I've got to catch that devil... Chick and Johnny met a discouraging sight when they reached the first line of traps. There was a marten in each one of them. But the wolverine had been there, and each of the carcasses had been partially eaten. Each of the pelts had been ruined. It was the same story at the second line of traps. Chick was so discouraged that he found his thoughts impossible to control. It's no use, Johnny. He's been here too the Indians say they're evil spirits that have taken the form of an animal. That's easy to believe. Impossible to catch, impossible to fight, and cunning. Indian devils. 
It's like having a curse laid on you. Nothing you can do about it. Hopeless. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Boy, when that old alarm clock goes off in the morning, I'll bet there's lots of folks who wish they could go right on sleeping for 20 years. That's right, Bob. Hey, where'd you come from? Me? I don't know, but I'm an authority on sleeping. Gee, who are you? And where'd you get that funny-looking hat and old-fashioned clothes? (laughs) Gosh, you look like you just stepped out of an old storybook. That's right, young, young fella. The name's Rip Van Winkle. Rip Van Winkle? Yes, indeed. Well, tell me, Rip, do you ever sleep that long anymore? No, sir, not me. I like and need a good night's sleep just like everyone else. But come morning, I'm powerful anxious to wake up. You are? You bet. I wouldn't miss breakfast for anything. Breakfast? Yes, sir. Nothing's going to keep me from my breakfast of Quaker Puff wheat or... Quaker puff rice. Oh, you go for the cereal shot from guns. Do I? Say, I pour on the old milk or cream, add my favorite fruit, and you know what? What? There's no beating that eating. That's what. Well, <laughs> thanks for dropping around, Rip. And say, fellas and girls, take a tip. Quaker puff wheat and Quaker puff rice are the breakfast cereal shot from guns to make them crisp and tender. Yes, these ready-to-serve king-size premium grains are actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them bigger and better tasting. What's more, wheat or rice shot from guns is good for you. Furnishes restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Ask Mom right now to order big red and blue packages of delicious Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice shot from guns. Now to continue our story. That night, after supper, Chick continued to brood. And as Johnny scratched Speed's rough, he watched his father. He didn't say anything because he was afraid that Chick would bring up a subject he had mentioned that morning in the forest. And finally, when Chick looked at Speed and sighed, the boy knew the moment had come. It's about time for me to go to bed, isn't it? Not yet. We've got to talk about Speed some. Yes, sir. He's getting old. He can still pull his weight better than any other dog on the team. You know that isn't true, Johnny. I haven't been able to use him at all this winter. Well, he he doesn't mind too much, I guess. I haven't been able to shoot enough game this year to feed the dogs. I've had to buy it. Speed doesn't eat much. Son, with the way things have been going, we can't waste a penny. No, sir. It's going to be just as hard for me to say goodbye to Speed as it will be for you. Goodbye. Why do we have to say goodbye? Because we can't afford to keep a dog that isn't earning his food. You're not going to... Not speed, Dad. You couldn't do that to him. Do what? Kill him. Oh, of course not. Oh, I thought... Ben Martin's going to take him. He at the post? Yes, he'll have a good home. It was Ben who broke him to harness, you know. But speed belongs to us now. He's part of the family. You'll be able to see him whenever you go into town. Why can't we keep him here? I've tried to explain. Something. There ought to be some way. It would be if it weren't for that wolverine. You'll catch him. I doubt it. There's something else. Ben's fond of speed. He'd like to have him around the post. He was a champion in his day. He's still a champion. And, well, Ben considers it a privilege to give him a home. He's going to give me a young dog to take his place. He won't be as good as speed. He'll be young and he'll be able to work. He's been well trained and Ben's giving him to me. I... I couldn't afford to buy him. You could if you caught that wolverine and had a lot of pelts to sell. Let's not talk about the wolverine anymore. Let's not talk about speed anymore. I... I'm sorry, son. This is the way it has to be. I'm going to take him into Ben on my next trip. When? Tomorrow. Can I... Can I go with you? Johnny, won't it be easier to say goodbye here? No, Dad, I... I won't cry, I promise. Well, all right. We'll start early. The following morning, as soon as Chick and Johnny had their breakfast, they went out to the dog run to harness the team. Speed came with them. A 
the old dog understood that his working days were over. He merely stood by. What, Johnny? It isn't very far to town, is it? No. We don't have to get there awful fast, do we? No. Well, just once more. Couldn't your harness speed? As a lead? He'd like it an awful lot, Dad. Come here. The trail's hard packed and the sled's empty. Yes. Half a dozen pelts. I thought you'd ride the sled. I'd like to ride behind with you, Dad. Well, I... I think it's a good idea, son. You do? Sure. Come here, Speed. Come, boy. Come on, up in front here. Hey, you are making him awful proud, Dan. Ah, uh, he's a good dog. And so it happened that Speed had the place of honor at the head of the team on the trip to the trading post. Johnny remained with Speed inside the post. He stayed with the dog until Chick called out to him. Ready, Johnny? Yes, Dad. I think Speed understands. I'm glad. Goodbye, old fella. Goodbye, Speed. Speed stayed at the post for nearly a week. And then one morning, when the sun was shining brightly on the freshly fallen snow, he slipped out of the store and trotted up the trail in the direction of Chick Carter's cabin. An hour later, King was racing along the same trail at the head of the sergeant's team. He was working as a loose lead. Suddenly, he slackened his pace. What's the matter, King? All right, boy. Hold up, hold up. The forest had not been reached yet. There was open country on either side of the trail. That sun on the snow is blinding, boy. I can't see anything. Just a second while I got my goggles on. Now then, a dog over to the right? Is that what you're interested in? Wait a minute. It looks like speed. It is. Go get him, boy. He's a long way from home. Speed was still trotting along in the direction of the Carter cabin, but he was a long way off the trail. King raced up to him. There was mutual recognition, and then Speed turned and followed King back to the trail. As they neared the sergeant, King seemed to be trying to tell his master something. Hello there, Speed. How are you, boy? What's the matter, King? You're making an awful fuss. I'm sorry, fella. I don't understand you. Doesn't seem to be anything wrong with Speed. He isn't lame or... Well, let's make sure of that. I'll pass my hand in front of his eyes again. Uh-huh. wonder if this could have happened today, King. Might be only from the sun. I suppose his eyes have been getting weaker for a long time. I'm sorry, Speed. You can't see, can you? Well, don't you worry about it. We'll see for you. They're going to deliver you right to your door. Come on, boy. Up on the sled. Come on. That's it. Now lie down. I'll just pull this robe over you. Like that? You satisfied now, King? All right, then. Get up in front and go to work. On, King! On! The snow was up to King's chest, but he broke the trail for the team without apparent effort. And in less than an hour, they had reached the Carter cabin deep in the forest. Chick and Johnny came out to welcome the sergeant. Okay. Hello, 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 Sergeant. Yeah, that's feet on the sled. Speed, you come home. You come from the post, Sergeant? Why, no, we took the cut off. We've come from Blackwood Creek. Then where did you find Speed? A few miles from here. Well, we, we can't keep him. He belongs to Ben now. He what? Uh, I'll tell you about it later. You're going to have to keep him for a little while. What's the matter with his eyes, Sergeant? He's looking right into my face, but he doesn't seem to see me. He doesn't, Johnny. He's gone blind? Or perhaps he's only snow blind. I have something in my first aid kit that might help a little. We'll put a bandage over his eyes for a few days. You won't tear it off, will you, Speed? <laughs> no. You're a wise old dog. There you are. Lead him inside, Johnny. Sure. Maybe it's only for a little while, Speed. But I'm glad you're home. It was not until Speed's eyes had been treated and bandaged and Johnny had gone out to feed the sergeant's dogs that Chick found a chance to explain the reason for Speed's new residence. In the first place, Speed is the best dog that Ben ever trained. Yes? He likes to brag about him. He'd like to have him around the post. I understand that. Well, I... I won't say there's anything mean about Ben. A little stingy, perhaps. He's always given me credit when I needed it. Until this year. Until this year. I needed a dog to take Speed's place as a lead. I needed food for Johnny and me. Aren't you getting any pelts at all? Very few. And Ben knows about the Wolverine. Well, that's right, you don't. I do, though. That's why I'm here. But uh, go on, finish what you were saying. Ben doesn't believe I can pay him what I owe him. And, well, Speed's my security for the debt. I see. To stay at the post this winter, and if I can't pay by spring, he'll stay there for good. He won't, Chick. 
Obvious he's run away. He'll do it again. We'll have to take him back. You can't separate him from Johnny. Boy's taking it pretty well. He shouldn't have to, Jack. I agree. That makes me a pretty poor father, doesn't it? Speed that's providing for Johnny, not me. There's nothing wrong with you that one less Wolverine won't cure. I've tried everything. You've tried to catch him. I'm suggesting that you let him catch himself. Oh. Through his temper. I don't get it. Listen, Jack. You surround your bait about a dozen traps. Hide some of them. Leave some of them in the open. He'll find them all no matter what you do. That's true, he will. But they won't keep him away from the bait. He'll find some way to get to it. And when he does... He'll eat and run. No, now wait. Old Pierre Ledoux showed me how to fix the bait so he can't eat it and he can't tear it loose. Have everything we need on the sled. Now you know that a wolverine has the worst temper in the world. When he can't get that bait, he'll go berserk and forget all about his safety first methods. Sooner or later, he's going to step into one of those traps. It worked for Pierre? Yes, Jake. There's no harm in trying it, is there? No. I've got some fresh caribou meat hanging out in the shed. We'll use that for bait. Now, let's get started right away. After they had made their preparations, the sergeant and Chick carried a dozen traps into the forest. King went with them. But Johnny couldn't tear himself away from speed, and he stayed at the cabin. At last, the sergeant found the right spot. This gully will do, Chick. We'll put the bait at the end of it. They'll have to come into the gully to get at it. When it does... As the sergeant and Chick worked, the dogs in the runway at the back of Chick's cabin started to bark. King heard them faintly in the distance, and he decided to investigate. The dogs had a good reason for their demonstration. The wolverine who had been raiding Chick's traps had caught the scent of the caribou meat in the shed in back of the cabin, and he was biting and clawing his way under the flimsy wooden structure. The ground was hard, but its flint-like resistance to his effort only made him mad, and he burrowed viciously. Inside the cabin, Johnny was sitting on the floor beside Speed. That's funny the dog should be howling that way, Speed. What do you suppose is the matter with them? I'd better go investigate. <laughs> Now, wait a minute. You've got to stay here. Come back here, Speed. You can't go off. <laughs> Didn't you hear what the sergeant told you? You've got to take it easy. Is there something really wrong? Well, maybe if I held on to your collar, you, you could come along with me. Come on. Speed led Johnny directly to the door of the shed. The wolverine had forced his way into it, and now he was tearing at the fresh meat. What's inside there, Speed? I've got to find out. As the door opened, the wolverine turned and snarled his defiance. He had no intention of leaving his feast for anyone. The wolverine, the engine devil. I've got to get the shotgun. The little boy ran up the slope to the cabin, still holding on to Speed's collar. He dragged a chair over to the wall lifted down his father's shotgun. I know I'm not supposed to touch this speed, but it'll be gone by the time Dad gets back with the sergeant. I know all about it anyway. I know how to load it. The gun was almost as big as the boy, oh. but he wrestled manfully with it and loaded it with desperate speed. There. Now stay right here, Speed. The boy ran out of the cabin. The gun was a terrible burden. I hope I can lift it up and shoot straight. I've got to. He started down the slope. It was slippery. Near the bottom, he lost his balance. Oh. The gun had become entangled in his legs. He tried to thrust it away from him and reached out with his hands to break his fall, but it was too late. His head hit a large stone just beside the entrance of the shed. Blind, unreasoning rage seized the wolverine at the second intrusion, and he turned and glared at the unconscious boy lying in the doorway. But Speed had raced out of the cabin when he heard his master's cry. He nuzzled the boy when he reached his side and then instinctively jumped over him and stood between him and the menace he could smell but couldn't see. The wolverine decided to attack. Speed stood sightless but resolute. The wolverine started toward him, eager for the kill. At that moment, there was a blur of silvery gray in the doorway, and King shouldered his way past Speed. The wolverine's jaws slashed at him and raked his shoulders he leaped aside. Speed's chest was left unprotected, and the wolverine tore at it. But King, remembering the lesson Speed had taught him, seized the vicious animal by the back of the neck and tossed him in the air. Yes, King had learned to fight this devil, but it was far different from his first encounter in the forest. There was less room to leap aside. There was less time to strike. And he must continue attacking or the wolverine would strike a death blow. 
King called in all his strength and speed. The wolverine raged at him, tiny eyes rimmed with red and brimming with hate. Again and again he was tossed into the air, only to return to the attack with redoubled fury. And then came the time that King, with a solid hold, hurled him violently against one of the shed's corner posts. The wolverine was stunned for a second when he hit the floor. The second was long enough. At the end of it, the devil was dead. The sergeant and Chick were on their way back to the cabin when King raced through the forest to his master's side. He barked frantically and tugged at the sergeant's pocket. Something wrong, Chick. Something serious. I wonder if it's Johnny. Go on, King. We'll follow you. King circled the cabin when they reached it, and the sergeant and Chick could see Johnny standing in the doorway of the shed with speed beside him. Johnny, are you all right? Yes, sir. I'm all right now. What's that? Oh, that's blood on Speed's chest. He saved my life. What? How? The Wolverine. I was going to shoot it, but I fell and hit my head. I don't remember anything more. When I woke up, Speed was standing beside me. And look in there. The Wolverine. Speed killed him. What? Sergeant, he's telling the truth. He's telling the truth. It is the Wolverine, and he's dead. Dad, you, you can't send Speed back to the post now. Not after he saved my life. He won't go back, son. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> With the Wolverine gone, we'll have plenty of pelts, and Speed will have a home with us as long as he lives. It was only the sergeant who noticed King's wound, and he dressed it in the kitchen as Chick and Johnny were caring for Speed in the front room. I don't think we'll say anything about this, King. You don't want me to, do you, boy? No, we'll let Speed have the credit. But I know where it belongs, don't I, fella? Good work, King. This case is closed. <laughs> In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's program. Ask Mom, she knows. Yes, Mother knows there's nothing like a family that's a breakfast-happy family. So here's a tip. Ask her to serve delicious Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice for breakfast tomorrow. Everyone goes for these crisp, tender, king-sized kernels of premium wheat or rice shot from guns. Just remember, they're never sold in bags or bulk. To get the original crisp, fresh wheat or rice shot from guns, always look for the big red and blue packages with the smiling Quaker man on the front. That way, you're sure to get the one and only Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from gun. Listen Wednesday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the adventure of Arrowhead Frame-Up. When I went to call on Big Dagger, it was to be just a routine interview with a witness to a murder. But before I finished that interview, I found myself in a desperate fight. And believe me, I was lucky to escape with my life. Be sure to hear this exciting story Wednesday. Till then, this is Jay Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, the giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Still less than one penny a serving. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.